Hi, it's Lisa from the blog Farmhouse on Boone, and today I have an IKEA bar stool, and I want to show you how to make a custom slip cover for it. I had a friend approach me, and she is doing a kitchen renovation. And she saw these bar stools at Ikea and she liked the shape, but she wanted something a little more custom for her style. And so she chose a ticking stripe fabric and asked if I would make a slip cover for it. I wanted to make something pretty basic, not very frilly, but I liked the idea of adding a tailored pleat around all four corners. And so this is what I came up with for this standard Ikea stool, which I will link in the description so that you can get your hands on the exact same stool if you want to make this pattern. So it has a pleat on all four sides, kind of a basic drop down here with the seam here. So it's very basic, not too complicated. I want to show you how I constructed it. For the cut list, this top piece here is going to be 18 and a half inches wide by 31 inches long because it goes over the top and comes down in the back. If you're using stripes for the top piece, you're gonna to wanna to cut them so they go vertically. For the seat piece, you're going to want to cut a rectangle that is 18 inches wide by 20 and a half inches long. And I'm actually going to show you how to angle that in because this seat goes out in a V so that it's 20 and a half inches at the bottom, 18 and a half at the top. So I'll show you how to cut that. But for now you can cut it into a rectangle and I'll show you later how to angle it in. For the two side pieces on the arm here, you're gonna wanna cut two pieces four inches wide by 15 long. You want the 15 inches for the stripes to go vertical. And then for the bottom piece that extends all the way around in pleats, you will want a piece that is nine inches long by 94 inches around. Now for me, I had to attach two pieces together because I had no continuous piece that long. And I actually put the seam inside the pleats so that you can't really see it. I will show you how to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and insert the cut list here so that you can see what all you have to cut. You can maybe take a screenshot of it. Also, all this information is available on the blog, farmhouseonboon.com, with more details and links for this specific project. I'll also link everything in the description below. But there is your cut list. I've cut all the pieces out already. I have my seat piece, which is 20 and a half inches wide by 18 inches long. I made sure to run the stripes vertically. I have my 18 and a half inch wide by 31 inch long piece that's gonna go right here. My two side pieces, my bottom panel pieces that will pleat, but they're apart and I'm going to sew them together, right sides together, so that they're one nice long piece. So I'm gonna sew right here so that they'll be connected. And then I'm gonna put that seam inside a pleat so that you can't see it. I'm going to show you how to angle in this seat piece because it's 20 and a half inches long at the bottom and it needs to be 18 and a half inches long at the top. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it in half and then I'm going to start in one inch because I need to take off two inches at the top. And if I fold it in half and take off one, that'll of course be two. Just made a little notch where it'll be 18 and a half inches. And then I'm just going to start angling it in from this notch and then make a slight edge all the way down to the other end where I want it to be 20 and a half inches. Now that we have all the pieces officially cut out, I'm going to show you how to start assembling this slip cover. So to do that, I'm going to take this off of the chair. Now, one thing to note is you are going to need the chair to do this project. You could also adjust this for a different size chair just by watching how I do this. You could apply the exact same thing just with different measurements to any chair. But if you buy this Ikea chair, the measurements will already be correct. And I would definitely recommend building it onto the chair. You won't get a nice fit unless you do. So everything I slip cover, I do it this way. I find I have the best results. I'm going to take the right side of the fabric and put it against the chair, the 18 and a half by 31 inch piece. And I'm going to, on the sides here, pull them down so that they are even. This one's gonna end up being kind of sitting on top of the chair. This one's gonna be back here. But if I pulled it, I could see that they were even right here. 
So I'm going to do that on both sides. And then I also want to be sure that this is coming out about the same length on both sides. I'm going to start pinning on these side pieces. So I have these vertical stripe four inches by 15. I'm going to grab my pins and start placing it on. Now a little pro tip here. When you're going in your machine, you're going to be sewing with this edge against the measuring thing. So you want your pins to all go like this, or you're going to have a hard time pulling them out against where your machine is. So I'm going to carry the pins around, and now they're going to go down this way, so that when I sew around like this, I can pull the pins out as I go. Now this part is not going to be super tight, like with this, the wing back chair that I slip covered, which I will link in the description box below. But I wanted these to have a little bit of a looser, more casual fit and not be so, so tight. I'm not pulling hard, it is snug, but I'm not pulling super taut either. So although I kept it on the stripes down here, around this top here, I'm going to have to start angling them in because they have to hug this. And I need to create a nice line so that when I go over my machine, I can actually know where my sewing line is. So I'm just going to kind of angle the pins in so that I can see how it fits. And when I'm over at my machine, I'm just going to kind of round the corner, trying my best to mimic the shape. This right here, when I go to my machine, should give me a nice line. Okay, so I'm gonna go sew this. I'm gonna serge it too. If you don't have a serger, you can go ahead and use a zigzag stitch just to reinforce these seams and to finish these raw edges so you don't get a bunch of fraying. And then I'm gonna repeat the exact same thing on the other side, and then we will have the top part of the slipcover finished. So I've got the top front and back piece sewn together with the sides. I'll do a little close up so you can see the shape and how everything turned out on the inside. We're gonna turn it out, see that it fits, and then start working on the next part. You always, with any slipcover project, want to periodically make sure that you have the right fit before you start attaching more pieces because right now it wouldn't be too big of a problem to fix. You just have to reuse the top part. But if you find out at the end that everything's all off and askew, you won't be able to fix it. You kind of can't really go back from that. Okay, next we have this triangular angled piece that's 18 and a half inches at the top and 20 and a half at the bottom. So I am going to attach it. Now, of course, I have to do right sides together. So I'm going to go ahead and just switch this back to inside out. Now make sure you have your 20 and a half inch at the bottom and your 18 and a half at the top. Now if you're doing a square stool that doesn't have this angle to it, you're fine, you don't have to worry about that. Now because I'm doing stripe, if you are brand new to sewing, I'd recommend sticking with a solid fabric and you can't really go too wrong with that. But if you're gonna do stripes, which are pretty, so you might want to, make sure that these vertical stripes are lining up. If you have to pull it a little bit one way or the other, it's a good enough reason to do so. You want blue on blue and white on white if you're doing a blue and white stripe like myself. Now before I get to really pinning, I want to be sure, see I had about two inches over here and about a centimeter over here, so I need to pull that over and make sure everything's even. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about this part where the top front piece meets the seat and meets the side. So this part could seem a little tricky. It's really not too difficult. So I'm gonna get close up and show you how I pinned it. I took the side piece and kind of extended it down along this side piece and then angled it 
to where it's also getting the front top part of the seat piece, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna sew this across about to here, and then I'm gonna bring this down like this, and this will be the area that the bottom panel attaches to. So let me show you the same thing on the other side. So you can see on this side, I so already sewed the side to this piece, like this. And I'm just bringing this like this. And when I put the pin on, it's not gonna lay flat because the pin's on it, but once it's sewn, it will. And then this will be what I can attach the bottom panel to on this side. So first I'm gonna go over to my machine and I'm gonna, this is already sewn, so I'm just going to, when I sew the seat piece to the back piece, I'm gonna extend it like this for that to happen. I have sewn this long piece together. That's gonna be the panel around the front. I want to hide the seam inside the first pleat. So if you're brand new to making pleats, I'll give you a quick intro. Basically, I'm going to measure from this middle line, which is gonna be where I want my pleats to meet, two inches this way, two inches this way, and I'm gonna press a seam at both two inch spots and then bring those together in the middle. So let me show you close up just what I'm talking about. Measuring two inches this way, and I find that that lands right here. So along this line, this is a benefit of using lines for pleats. I can fold all along the line and press it like this. Then I'm gonna go to the other side of this seam right here and I'm gonna find two inches. It goes right here along this line. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same, just press a nice crease in it. I'm gonna take both of these creases that I've pressed and bring them in to my middle line. And I'm gonna again press them down. After I've done that, I'm gonna add a pin like this here and then do the other side. That'll be the pleat. Now, I forgot to mention that it is best to first hem this. I'm gonna go around and hem this bottom up with a half inch and then another half inch and sew all the way around to make a hem before I do the other three pleats. And then I'll show you how we're going to attach them to the chair. I'm gonna turn this back again the wrong way before I start attaching the front panel. So I'm gonna make sure everything's nice and straight, even though it's gonna be inside out. Because once this panel goes on, it's done. So we don't want anything off at this point. Okay, I'm gonna turn the chair around. Basically, I wanna pin our first pleat that I made with the seam inside. I, I went ahead and put a little stitch at the top because I had pins there before and I wanted to keep it in place while we're sewing it. So basically you want the back corner seam to line up with the center of the pleat. Right sides together, raw edges together. That's how you want it to line up. You can put a little pin in place. And then here again with the stripes, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I can get them to line up along the back because since there are stripes, you don't want anything too off. So I'm gonna go across this whole back, putting in pins to make sure that the stripes line up. Then I'm gonna start sewing, because what I like to do with any slipcover project is sew a little bit, pin a little bit, sew a little bit, and then continue on. If you watch my slipcovering a wing back chair video, that will be very apparent, because I like to make sure that things are fitting okay, and the best way to do that for me is to sew. So I will sew to about here, and then I'll leave room for me to work the pleat and then I'll sew the pleat on after that. And I'm gonna also sew this way to about here-ish. And then that way when I come back to this, I'm gonna be making pleats for these two areas. So we're gonna go that far, and then I'm gonna have two corners in which to make pleats after I've done that. So I'm just gonna go over and sew like this, right sides together, raw edges together, with about a half inch seam from about here all the way to about here. And then I'm gonna work the other two pleats. So the reason that I wanted to sew a little ways before 
I figured out where this pleat would hit is because I really can't be exactly sure where to start putting the pleat until I kind of get around to this point. I've laid the fabric over how it'll go because it's going to round this corner. It's not going to go here than here. It's going to round it like this. I got everything real even. Now, this is probably the stripe that I want where I want it to hit, but I actually have to go two over from that because I'm gonna put the pleat in. So I'm gonna measure two inches over and find a stripe there, which I found. And that's gonna be where I'm gonna build my pleat from. What I'll do is I'll put a pin in where I think would be a good pleat for this corner. And I think it's gonna work out perfectly, but I'm gonna put a pin in on both sides, like I said, where I think the pleat's gonna go. This won't be my official pleat. I'm still gonna have to press it, of course. I'm gonna do the same on the other side of the pleat like this. So I still have that same stripe that I'm hoping to be my pleat stripe. I'm gonna go over two inches from it as usual for a pleat. And I'm just gonna kind of put in a mock pleat really quick to see if it does hit where I want it to hit. And then if it does, I will go down to my iron. I'll take this off, of course. Go down to my iron and actually put the pleat in. If this was going around in such a way, would it hit the corner of the chair? And I find that yes, it would hit the corner. I wanted to hit this front corner of the chair, not back here or anything, but this front corner. I just want to find the spot where the pleat can hit, if that makes sense. At the same time, I'm going to go ahead and put this pleat in because I can do two at once when it's off the chair, which I want to do. I'm going to make sure everything's straight and then I'm going to know that I want the pleat to hit right here. So if I didn't have to build a pleat, this stripe would be perfect because it would line up. So I'm going to go two inches over from that and see how it works to make this my pleat stripe. And it works great. I'm still going to put both in just to be sure. And I'm going to kind of pull it and see that it would line up because when I go around to sew, I want these pleats to line up perfectly with this back seam. i put this in here. I'm afraid I need to move it over just a little. See, it's coming too far this way. So I'm just gonna scooch it over a little bit. That and make this stripe the pleat. Put both pins in, pull it taut, and see if it lines up. And it does. So now I'm gonna go over and press these four pleat spots and then I'm gonna sew them on and then I'm gonna show you how to do the last pleat. I've sewn on the pleats that I just showed you how to make and now I'm to this last part where I have these ends. And so what do you do with that? Well, what I'm gonna do is bring it to the corner of the chair and then I'm going to add on two and a half inches to this and I'm gonna trim. And the reason I added two and a half is I know I want two inches per side for the pleat, but I also have to account for the fact that I'm going to add a seam allowance. And you wanna be sure to have plenty so you can make your pleat here. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. I'm gonna add on two and a half inches I'm going to take this off my chair and go sew these together like this, right sides together. Then I'll be ready to put on my last pleat, sew it in place and be done. Sew these together, right sides together and serged it so that there would be a nice finished edge. In a perfect world, because I cut it two and a half inches longer and sewed it, I would just put the pleat in right at the two inches that you would expect. But when I put the pleat in at two inches over on each side, it didn't quite line up. I needed to take a few more stripes worth over each direction to make it make this nice tight way around because if it was a little bit further apart, it was kind of saggy and it wouldn't line up. So you just kind of have to work with it. It might be right at two inches like your other pleats. It might not. The pleat will look the same either way it's not a big deal it's just that you need it to line up and be tight around this corner i've pinned that in place then i'm just going to kind of pull it down like this it's gonna like i said both corners kind of round front so i'm just gonna take my machine and i'm gonna stitch around like this After sewing this last pleat in place and then doing serging all the way around the inside or if you end up having no serger you can use a zigzag stitch. You don't want it to fray because then your slip cover could fall apart. I sometimes even like to go around and almost put in two stitches in most places because this is going to get washed a lot. This is a kitchen bar stool and so you want to be sure that it's sturdy and holds up 
But after that, this is all done. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. You can also check out my channel and look at all of my sewing how-to videos in the playlist. I have lots of DIY projects and sewing projects as well as food from scratch and natural living. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.